Now, talking about these gates, uh, the next one we'll be talking about is the Caesar's Gate. So, Caesar's Gate actually got its name from how close or inter intertwining the legs would be. Now, you see the legs are almost crossing each other like scissors. All right. So, if you ever see someone walking like this, they actually have a Caesar's Gate. All right. So, let's talk about it from the definition to the characteristics. To the causes, to the diagnosis, to the possible treatment of a scissors gate. Okay, so um, what is the definition? We said that a scissors gate is a type of walking abnormality which is characterized by crossing the legs while walking, which shouldn't be there, right? So if somebody is what crossing the leg while walking, you simply know that there's a problem. Okay, so this will actually resemble the motion of scissors. Okay. So it is commonly seen in individuals with some certain neurological conditions we should be looking at under causes. Okay. So what are the characteristics? There will be leg crossing. Okay. So the legs will cross over each other during walking. Okay. And it's similar to the blades of scissors crossing each other when you are using scissors. That's what they call a scissors gait. Okay. Spasticity. There's increase in muscle tone. Okay, that means the spasticity in the legs will actually increase, particularly in the hip adductors. There's a narrow base. So the legs are placed very close together or even cross midline with each step. Can you see how the legs are close together? All right. Unlike in ataxic gait where there's a wide base. All right. So flexed knees and hips. So the knees and hips are flexed and this is leading to a crotched posture. Slow and effortful movement. So walking is slow, is laborious, and requires significant effort. Imagine you are walking and your legs are crossing. You might even fall. Okay. So what is the causes? All right. That's basically a disease association. Now, it could be cerebral palsy. It's a common cause of a scissors gait in children, resulting from brain damage that affects what muscle control and coordination. It could be multiple sclerosis, and it's a condition that affects the central nervous system, leading to muscle spasticity and gait abnormalities. It could be spinal cord injury, and this is trauma to the spinal cord that disrupts the normal control of muscle tone and coordination. Then other neurological conditions like stroke or traumatic brain injury can all result in what scissors gait. Okay, diagnosis, of course. Caesar's gate, once you see it, you know. Once you see it, you know. All right. So, clinical observation you observe the patient's gait and their movement patterns when they are walking. Neurological examination you access for things like what muscle tone, reflexes, coordination, and strength when they are walking. All right. Then, imaging studies this way you are doing MRI or CT scan just to identify any structural abnormalities in the brain or spinal cord. All right. Treatment. Physical therapy can be there, where you are doing exercises to improve strength and flexibility, and also coordination. Medication, so anti-spasticity medications such as what? Baclofen or botulinum toxin injections, okay? Can all reduce what? Muscle tone. Okay, so let me write something down. All right, so um, orthopedic intervention can in involve things like what braces, like orthototics or surgical procedures just to correct deformities and improve the mobility of the person. Occupational therapy, so assistance, assisting the person with their daily activities and adapting the environment just to improve what the function. All right, so this type of gait can actually impact the person's what, mobility and their quality of life. So you do all you can just to help them uh, manage that. Okay, so that's it for scissors gait.